So you're considering buying a property or you own a property and you're considering doing some Airbnb? Well, take a look at this video to make sure that you considered all the implications. So when considering uh, having an Airbnb, you should consider four different things. First off, are you allowed to have short-term rental in the building that you're considering doing short-term rental? And some people would think, obviously, yes, it's my own. But the quick answer is no, not necessarily. Some properties allow it and some properties completely refuse short-term rentals. And some might refuse long-term rentals, but those are quite rare. So maybe you're not even allowed to buy this property and to do short-term rentals. So that's something that you have to consider. Second is you wanna make sure that you're well insured. There's a big difference with insurance companies between you owning a place and taking advantage of everything that this place offers versus you owning a place and renting it out to a bunch of different people who might not take care of it as much as you would. So there's definitely an in a difference in insurance there and Airbnb might help you out with that, but it's something you really wanna make sure that you're fully covered, especially if you have different things that could be damaged that are worth a lot of money to you. And then afterwards, so if you establish that you can do it, you've established that you're covered if something happens, the things that you need to consider, and a lot of people just think, oh, I'll do a bit of Airbnb on the side and I won't declare it. Well, the thing is, is that when you're doing Airbnb, you're on a website and the government is not that stupid. It could look up on this website and it could see that you're on an Airbnb. And I've heard of different people being called out about it. So first off, you have to declare it. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're and like anything else in life. If you don't declare it, you could be in trouble if the government catches you. And then if you declare it, which you should, well, you'll have to pay a certain level of taxes on those revenues. So the, the income that you generate creates a certain level of taxes that you'll have to pay at the end of the year. So that should be considered because if you're renting it out at 100 or $200 a night, don't think that all of that money goes to you a lot of that money will go to the government. So keep in mind all the financial implications. Obviously, if you declare revenues, you might be able to declare costs, but that's something that you have to look into. And then afterwards, that's the revenue side, but you also have to consider what happens when you'll actually sell this property in the future. Maybe if you never rented it out, you were able to declare it as your principal residence and have all capital gains being tax exempt. But now since you've rented it, maybe, depends like this is really like very dependent on your scenario maybe you'll have a situation where you can't uh, declare it as all of your principal residence depends what portion of your property you're renting out and so on and so forth so different questions you have to ask yourself before jumping in and saying airbnb is the way to go there's a lot of things to consider in terms of are you allowed how much more will it cost you in insurance how much are you paying into the government in terms of sale tax and when it comes to selling, how much are you losing in terms of capital gains exemption? So please consider all of those before you make the jump. And hopefully uh, you'll be able to make the most intelligent money-making decision possible. So hopefully this video was useful for you and I'll catch you on the next one. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing or joining my class where I guide you to apply and expand on the information found in these videos to real life examples. Have a good day.